Here are five upcoming Chinese American indie films that you might need to check out, guys. We're going to talk about what we think and if these are the Chinese American movies that we always needed. Hey, first up, we've got Didi. Let's run the clip. What was your name again? Chris. All my friends just call me Wang Wang. What should I call you? Um. Boom, Andrew. Let's, what's the synopsis, bro? I mean, I'll need, let me just read it off the INDB. In 2008, during the last month of summer before high school begins, an impressionable 13-year-old Taiwanese-American boy learns what his family can't teach him. How to skate, how to flirt, and how to love your mom. Now, I will say this. This trailer has been going around on social media, and my Asian film friends, the guys who are in film, who like film for their job, they think it's going to be pretty good. And I do think this is the second movie of the director, and we're going to talk about his first movie. It's also on this list. But basically, this is a coming of age for particularly Chinese-American, Taiwanese-American guys. Um, but because he's nerdy. He's yeah. nerdy, he's from a Confucian, scholastically-centric family, and he wants to be cool in cool-centric American public school. But but I will say this, I can relate to some of the scenes of, like, flirting with girls, especially even non-Asian girls growing up, you know, because he's, he's probably- Well, he's flirting with a hopper girl, I right, believe, right? He's, but he's also flirting, he's probably, this probably takes place in California, but maybe not in the San Gabriel Valley Chinese enclave, right? right? Let's just say it's in the San Fernando Valley. Or sure. Something. And uh, he's super awkward, and he's like, uh, beefing with his parents he's got the american culture this super repressive chinese culture um i'll say this it was really nostalgic some of the scenes but is it more of the same and is it just an elevated version of a classic asian nerd coming of age story andrew what do you give this is this a must i mean a nazi we have a friend who went to film school who's a pro professional director who said he thinks this is the one no i think this is a must see because of the drama behind it and it's not trying to be this goofy movie and uh it takes it seriously it's taking adolescence from an asian american guy seriously i think that's beneficial i think it's beneficial you know and yeah he's a you know he's a taiwanese american kid probably comes from like yeah. an educated family and is trying to figure things out you know it's a relatable story still yeah it's gonna remind it's gonna me of like watching it there's definitely gonna be some things that like trigger some memory banks some mm. deep-seated corners yeah. of the mind yeah I, I think when it comes to asians and drama i do think we're better than that at even than even asians in comedy movies for some reason i don't know i'll explain anyways guys the next movie number two is sight so this is actually out in select theaters in america right now david up the block there's a theater regal essex that is actually showing this movie for a couple weeks i believe so anyways sight is when a blind orphan arrives in his waiting room seeking a miracle, a world-renowned eye surgeon must confront his past and draw on the resilience he gained growing up in China during the Cultural Revolution to try to restore her sight. This is based on a true story of Ming Wang, who is a uh, world-renowned eye surgeon. Let's run the clip. There was an uprising in my hometown. <laughs> I had this patient from India, a very brave girl. Hello, Kajal. Boom! David, I'll say it, this, it, man. Wait, hold on, hold on. Does it kind of remind you? This this does look good. Does it remind you of a Lifetime film? Well, it reminds me of like CBS, Touched by an Angel, right. etc. CBS is like famous for this, like almost want to say like Christian movie style content. It feels religious, but it might not be. You know what right. I mean? But like, yo, for does, a second when they had all the flashbacks of the Cultural Revolution, I was like, yo, am I watching Three Body Problem right now? <laughs> No, uh, but I mean, this movie got picked up and is out in theater. So you have to understand, like, it's it's good to some level for sure. Yeah. It had to be good to a certain point. So if it's based off a real story. I mean, I guess it's cool, but I don't know. Is it, what what context would you watch this? I would watch this with the family. I would definitely watch this with dad and mom at the same time. When I'm back home, like right. visiting, I would sit down and watch. Is it a movie? First of all, it looks good. But is it a movie that I would watch on my own? Probably not. You know, the funny thing is I was thinking about this movie, Tiger Tail, right? And I was like thinking, man, I don't know if I would want to feel comfortable watching that with my dad because it's about the relationship between a father and a son. That might make it even more like, you know what I mean? Nah, that's what movies are for, man. Nah, for the conversations man. you're not, you're afraid to have. See, I, that's a good, that is good content though. You anyways, know listen, listen, sight, uh, it is in theaters right now in select theaters. David, this next one. Number three, bro. I think this one's but, a banger. I'm let's not. Just, a, just, let's, let's just no, play can the I trailer. can I say to be honest, this is not even a release trailer. I'm releasing this 
Nobody told me to release it. It's not even out on YouTube before, guys. I have a special link. That's why I'm only going to show 10 seconds of it because I feel bad. But we have to show this trailer and hype it up. This movie, Unspoken. Oh my, all right, long this, story short, long story short, man, it's based off a lot of true stories because a lot of Chinese international students, they come here for grad school, undergrad, they don't really understand how to move, America's a really crazy country, there's a lot of dangerous people here, a lot have been killed, I want to say maybe like five to ten. No, for sure. Less. Over International students have died. Specifically from China. And specifically a lot of a lot of women, a lot of uh, Chinese women, um, Chinese guys too. And so this, the, the now that's the truth. That's based in the true facts that some international students. That's the students, truth behind this story. Yes, international students have been killed in America while going to school. But- the Chinese father who is like an ex-cop that comes over to America. You mean ex-special forces from China coming up yeah. and like lighting up Nebraska yo, is not yo, the reality. When you want to talk about kind of like a taken revenge, revenge, kind of like grieving father who comes back or like the foreigner with Jackie Chan was a similar story. Um, oh, you were murking everybody. Yeah, dude, this, this movie is lit. I'm definitely yeah. going to watch this. I mean, just to get, you know, I didn't know when the, the else I was going to get a chance to say this, and this is like just a real note. I feel like sometimes international students, depending on what coaching they have or life reps they have not have or haven't seen, they're almost like, have you ever seen a video of a baby goat being eaten by a Komodo dragon? This would be the equivalent of the father of that baby goat that had no like survival instincts coming back with like an AR-15. Yeah. Um, moving on, point number four, and, uh, movie number four, and we've got Nai Nai and Wai Pua. Let's run the clip. So this is from Sean Wang, the same director as DD. Um, so he really knows how to nail it with these like the the kind of like Chinese American kind of like dramas, like dramatizing well, his it, childhood. Isn't it things that touch like maybe seventy to eighty five percent of Chinese Americans? Like, because yeah. you're like, man, it's relatable enough. And I I think a lot of us we're not used to seeing our stories filmed on like a red alexa or something yeah like no and, and listen he's a good storyteller i do want to know i'm pretty sure he's influenced by wong fu productions and us because this scene of the grandmas of why of of nai nai and why pool making it rain from the top of the stairs looks a lot like our meme but shout out to sean i'm sure he's seen our videos and wong fu's videos over the years but he is making films i don't know the guy personally but he's making good films right people now. people love they're Chinese grandmas, man. Yes. Dude, if you want to make an Asian American movie, definitely have an Asian grandmother in there. Please. But that like, is the but, key. But a spunky Asian grandmother. Yeah, a funny, lovable Asian grandmother. Uh, anyways, guys, so our fifth movie is called Worth the Wait from the same production company as Sight. Um, shout out to them. It's a rom-com with Lana Condor, Andrew Koji, Ross Butler, uh... We were actually almost part of the production. So shout out to King Street Pictures. But uh, yeah, this is a rom-com that's coming out. It doesn't even have a trailer yet. But that is a new Asian-American rom-com that is dropping. I think it'd be and interesting to see Andrew Koji outside of like a Bruce Lee killer type of role. Yeah, no, I mean, I am interested to see him do drama. But, you know, I think Andrew Koji, he's from Britain. And those British actors, they know how to like, they really know no, characters. No, no, no. British actors are actor actors. Yeah. They're bad. Like, they don't, they're just not like one style. They got many styles. So let me tell you this. Uh, my overall takeaways, guys, uh, let me know in the comments down below if any of these movies look interesting to you. Which ones are you looking out for? I do think they're all pretty high quality. Uh, oh, what's the context? What, what, are you, what, what you picking for what situation, right. man? So for Unspoken, the thriller action, you know, <laughs> grieving dad coming back and killing a bunch of dudes, uh, definitely watching that either by myself or with the boys. Dave, you want to watch that? Hell yeah. yeah that's, hell yeah. The, that's the one. I, that's the only one I can tell you I'm even going to watch. Yes, yes. I'm D definitely. D when is I'm this a, movie I'm, coming out? DD, I'm going to take a look at some reviews yeah. and I'm going to check it uh, out. DD, I would, I would watch that too. Um, Sight, 
and Nai Nai and Worth the Wait. So Worth the Wait, I will watch it with my girl, with my girlfriend. And then Nai Nai and Sight, I would watch with the family. And I really would yeah. tell mom and dad to watch it, though, or watch it with them. Overall, I'm going to say this. You know, these movies, they all look like a step up. Maybe other than Unspoken, they do look like they're in a similar vein or groove that it pre-existed. But with better lighting techniques, less cheesy scripts. Better actors. Less of this like, ha, 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 I'm making a movie type of like cheesiness from like the late 80s. You know, yeah. like that it, that somehow like Asian American, like Brother Son had that cheesiness from like the late yeah, 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, honestly, I would say most of these movies feel authentic. You know what I mean? And that's yes, what I like. Yes, yes, That's what I like is that Asian American films are just getting better and better, which means that eventually some of them are going to get big releases. I mean, like I, I said- I think it's funny that the first one had to do with D-Gen overachievers, Andrew, Better Luck Tomorrow, and they haven't made anything in that same vein since. I'm, I'm with the D-Gen yeah. overachievers. Yeah. I think that that's a good lane. All right, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if any of these movies look interesting. Uh, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.